Hi YouTube! So welcome to part 2 of the Caterpillar 349 build. So in this video I'm going to walk you through the steps of assembling the slew ring for this excavator. And I have also designed and 3D printed my own slew ring for the excavator. So now we have two options to choose from. Uh, we'll get back to that later in this video. But first I'm going to show you how to assemble the, the, the steel version of the slew ring. So this right here is the steel version that you can buy from AliExpress, maybe eBay and RCBR. Uh, RCBR is a site that sells a lot of hydraulic stuff. And these slew rings are actually very expensive and they can be hard to find. They are much harder to find now than they were last year. So having a 3D printed option uh, like that one right there is a good thing. Now I'm going to walk you through how to assemble this. If you decide to use a steel slew ring for your caterpillar or if you're using a 3D printed one like I am going to do, I will walk you through that after this one. So here's what you need. Uh, you need a motor, a turning motor. This is the specs of this motor. It's a 37 RPM motor. And you'll need a pinion. This is the pinion I'm going with. It's, it's a 12 tooth. Uh, it's got 6 millimeter bore. And these are very cheap on eBay and they are easy to find. And then you need a 3D printed motor mount that comes in the files. So let's start by making a groove in the motor shaft right here. Now if I put this pinion on like this and I tighten the set screws without making a groove, this will fall off eventually. So what I'm going to do, you can notice there's two holes on this pinion, which is really great. It will lock onto the motor very nicely. So let's make the grooves right away. Right now I'm marking, let's turn on the lights. Right now I'm marking uh, the motor axle where I should uh, cut the grooves. Yeah, so we're going to cut the grooves there. So I'm going to be using my Dremel for this job. So here you can see the two grooves. Now I didn't cut them too deep because I don't want to weaken the axle shaft too much. Okay, for the next step, um, I recommend that you use Loctite, uh, but I don't have that, so I'm using this gel glue, which works almost like Loctite, but it, it doesn't set as much, so it's easier to take off. I'm going to be using a lot of this glue. If you're using Loctite, don't use as much as this. <laughs> So we slide this pinion over, we slide it all the way down. Uh, I got a glue be between the pinion and the motor bushing right now, but don't worry, uh, the motor will be strong enough to rip the glue off, so don't worry about that. Now I tighten the set screw. Notice that I put a little glue on the set screw before I screwed it in. Like this. And this is the second set screw. Just turn it around. There we go. Now the pinion should be locked onto the motor and we're ready to mount the motor. Alright, so the next step is super easy push the motor through and then you put the screws in on this side right here now all of this should be self-explanatory but but it's nice to 
walk through the steps either way. So you line up the holes and you put in the screws. There we go. Now I'm putting in two screws because I'm taking off the motor again, but you should put in all the six screws. And once the motor is in place, you simply grab the slew ring, put the motor on, you try to line up these four holes right here with these holes on the slew ring. There's eight holes on the slew ring, but you should use four of them, obviously. So you line them up, and then you put the screws through them. So these screws are M3 by 20, and I put the lock nuts on the underside right here. Yeah, and we put in this one. There we go. And we put on the lock nuts, and we tighten the screws. Now you should do this on all four of these holes. As I said earlier, I'm taking off this again, so... Well anyway, that's how you assemble this uh, steel version of the slew ring. As you can see on the inside, the, the gears line up. And you got... Well, there's a little play, but once you tighten the screws, this play will be smaller. Also, you have some play on this plate because of the screw holes so when you tighten the screws make sure that you press the motor down into the gears and then tighten it okay so let's move on to the 3d printed slew ring so here's what you need to put together the 3d printed slew ring you need two of these bearings now the specs on these are 70 times 90 times 10. Now they are pretty cheap and I bought them from AliExpress. You need a motor. This is the same specs as the other slew ring so and the same process to mount the pinion gear so you just do that. And then you got the 3D printed parts. This is the bottom piece that mounts to the chassis and it's got the gears for the turning inside. Now these are 3D printed but I'm pretty sure that they will hold up. And you got six mounting holes on the bottom. So the specs are the same on the 3D printed slew ring and the steel version. And then this is the motor plate. It's basically the same plate as the other one only this one has more holes to mount on and all the <coughs> all these rings right here they are the rings that lock the the bearings so let's just start by assembling uh, the bearings and we'll take it from there so the first step is just inserting the bearings into these pieces they should be very tight like that. So when when they're as tight as this, there will not be any slop at all in the slew ring. Then you gotta line up these holes by looking at these ridges right here. You can see them. You line them up and of course you insert the bearing. <laughs> This piece right here is the one that locks the bearings inside. Now this should be mounted this way with this uh, T upward. And also this has a little ridge that you should line up with the other ones. Like so. Now you can screw them down with four screws. 
Now I'm using M3 by 30 millimeter self-tapping countersunk screws. Oh yeah, I said four screws. I am sorry, I meant eight. There should be eight screws. So now that we have the bearings locked in these pieces, we're going to mount this onto the bottom piece. So you simply take this piece and you put these with the screw heads down like so. Here you can see the pieces, the small or the thin one should be pointing down. Then you mount this onto the lower ring. Now these are very tight. I had to press fit them earlier. I might have to do it again. Yeah, they're in there now, so. And now the final step on this is to put on the locking ring. And this one is simple. You put it on with this pointing upward, like so. Then I use M3 by 20 self-tapping countersunk screws. Now, they don't have to be countersunk, but I just prefer it that way. So that's the bearings mounted in place. There's no slop at all, which is a good thing. Now let's assemble the motor. So you put the motor on the flat side like this. You line up the holes and you put in the screws. I'm using M3 by six millimeter metric screws to mount the motor. But you can also use uh, M3 by eight. Okay, so that's all the screws locked in tight. So now you take the slew ring bearing and then you insert the motor like this. Now, before I go further, I have to explain. You can see the holes where the screws are mounted into. Now we're going to line up the holes on this piece onto the other holes on the side. Here you can see there's a screw. Let me zoom in. Yeah, you can see the screw right here. Don't use those holes. You line them up with the other holes on the side. And you're using the countersunk holes on this piece. Yeah, this is perfect. There's almost no slop at all. So the screws I'm using here is the M3 by 20 screws again. And there we go. That's the slew ring mounted up. And there's no play at all. Now this is ready to be mounted onto the chassis.
And for those wondering about the hole in the middle, that's for the slip ring. Now I'm not going to install that in this video, but we'll get back to that later in the build. Okay, so that's how we assemble the slew rings, and I hope this video was helpful. And the slew rings are now ready to be mounted into the chassis. So, all right, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.